Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, I've been doing a series of videos that I'm calling Stupid Lightroom Tricks. That title is a bit of a misnomer because just about every trick I've demonstrated can be done in any photo editing application. The tricks aren't exclusive to Lightroom. That includes today's trick. Today, I'm going to show you how I edit large expanses of green grass. Often, a photo pops because of contrast. The simplest definition of contrast is that the darks are a bit darker and the lights are a bit lighter. When you move the contrast slider in a photo editing application up, that is exactly what you're doing. When you move it up, you're making the darks a bit darker and the lights a bit lighter. And you can see that it adds a bit of interest or pop to the scene. There are other types of contrast. Uh, there's contrasting colors. Those are colors that are opposite one another on a color wheel. There's also a type of contrast that can be stumbled upon or staged in a scene. I like to call it societal contrast. An example would be a winter street photo of an elderly woman walking down the street. She's all bundled up for the cold, and she's walking in front of a billboard that depicts a young woman in a swimsuit on a sunny beach. The main components of that scene contrast one another. So you can see how contrast could add interest and often can make a scene pop. Now, I'm going to show you how I add contrast to expansive green grass. I like to call it tonal contrast, but it's really just contrast. Here's how I go about doing it. We're going to start out working on this panorama. This is a place called uh, Mill Road Scenic Outlook. Look, <laughs> Mill Road Scenic Outlook. Um, it's really just an area on the side of the road that you could park your car, and there's some park benches there. And you could look at this big lawn. So it's unedited. I'm just going to do a simple edit to begin with. So typically what I'll do is I look at the brightest parts of the scene and I'll bring highlights down till I see some detail hopefully come in there. And the same thing for shadows. I'll look at the darker parts of the scene and then I'll open up shadows till I see some detail come into those areas as well. Then I'll get a white point. The way I like to do it is hold the option key on my Mac. It's Alt key if you have a PC. And when you hold that key in and click on the white slider, you'll get an entirely black screen. Move the white slider to the right until you see some color come through. When you see color, that means you're blowing out or clipping those color channels. You can see I'm clipping the blue color channel. Where you see white come in, that means you're clipping all three color channels, red, green, and blue. Typically, I don't like to clip the highlights. That means you're blowing out the highlights. I don't like to do that, so I'll back it off until all that color dissipates, which is right about there. Same thing for black. So I'll hold in that Alt to Option key. And this time when I click on the black slider, the screen will turn white. I'll move the black slider to the left till I see some color come through. It means I'm starting to clip the color channels there. That means I'm crushing the shadows in those areas. Where you see black come through, that means you're clipping all three color channels. I don't mind clipping the shadows a little bit. I like to have absolute black in my image and almost absolute white. So that gives me some tonal contrast just by adjusting those two sliders, whites and blacks. But I want to work on the grass all by itself, but typically with my workflow is I'll jump to the sky first. So I'm going to stay true to my workflow, and I'm going to edit the sky first. So I'm going to go to masking, and I'm going to mask for the sky, and then I'm going to go to effects, and I like to add texture clarity and dehaze to my skies. And I work these sliders from the bottom up. I'll go to the dehaze slider, move it to the right. Then I'll go to the clarity slider, move that to the right. And then finally, I'll add a tiny bit of texture as well. So I'm all set with the sky. Now I want to add this tonal contrast to the grass. The way I like to do it is first, I like to do it globally. So I'll go to the color mixer. Now you have the option to use the mixer itself or point color. I prefer to use the mixer itself. And again, as I mentioned, that really the simplest definition of contrast is you're making the brighter parts a little brighter and the darker parts a little darker. And if you look at the grass, you'll see it really consists of yellows and greens, with yellow being the brighter part and green being the darker part. So what I'll do is I'll go to the luminance sub-tab here and I'll go to yellow, and I'll make the brighter part yellow brighter by moving this slider to the right. Then I'll go to the green slider. This is the darker part. I make that a little darker by moving that to the left. 
Then I want to add a little saturation as well. So I'll go to the saturation slider and typically I'll make the yellows a little more saturated and sometimes the greens as well. Not all the time, but I will in this case as well. So this is a before after of just the mixer. So there's before and there's after. Now you could see it looks a lot more interesting. It dare say it even pops a little bit by just adding that bit of tonal variance to the grass by moving the luminance up for yellow, down for green, and saturation up for both. Now, I probably want to do something with the trees as well. Uh, when I did move the yellow and green sliders in the mixer, it did affect the trees in a nice way. I like what it did there. You can see if you just look at the trees, there's before and there's after, but it's a little more subtle compared to the grass. So what I'll do now to add that same type of tonal variant to the trees is I will use masking for that. So I'll jump back up to masking and I'm going to create a new mask. And this time I'm, go this time I'm going to create an object mask. And when you do, you have the option to use a brush or you could draw like a rectangular marquee around something. I'm going to use the brush and I'm just going to then paint. You can see I get the red overlay and I want to just kind of go around the perimeter or the edges of the trees, in this case, the top edges at first. Come this way. And this uses AI to find what you're painting. So you don't really have to worry about going in the lines or anything like that. So we'll just do that. And then it will take a second to find the object. You can see it did uh, find it okay. Now what I'll do first is instead of just jumping to point color, we don't have a mixer with masking. We only have point color. But instead of just jumping right to point color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to tone first. And what I want to do is I want to go to whites and I want to make them brighter and the blacks darker. So I'm kind of adding this contrast here as well. And I can do the same thing with shadows as, as well. Then what I'll do is if, you know, that actually looks pretty good. I'd probably stop there. But just to show you what I might do also is then I would go to point color and I'd get the eyedropper. And then what I want to do is uh, click on the brightest part I could find. So the most yellow part of the tree, which is right there. And similarly, then what I'll do is I'll go to the luminance shift slider and I'll make that brighter. And you can see how it's affecting that brighter. Then I'll get um, the uh, eyedropper again. And I want to go to something that's darker green. So you, you got to kind of be careful because there's also black here, you know, where the shadow is strongest. So you want to try to stay with the darker green right there. And then make that a little darker. So we have the two now. We could go back to the yellow or the yellower part and make that a little brighter. If you want to add some saturation, you could, but I don't think I need to. So that is how I deal with this large expansive uh, expanses of green grass. So now from this point, I could continue doing any adjustments I think it might need. Um, in this case, I don't really need to sharpen it. By the way, it was very low ISO. I don't need to do anything with that. Um, maybe I would go to effects, add a vignette, something like that. It's not a super strong image to begin with. There's really uh, no main subject in this photo to grab your attention, but it is a good photo to demonstrate what I'm demonstrating today. So that's why I chose it. Let's just do one more very quickly. I have this image here, um, just to the hay bales, and you can see there's a lot of green grass here. Uh, this is slightly underexposed. Often my landscape images are a little bit underexposed because I often will expose for the sky because I don't want to blow out the sky. I mentioned I don't like to blow out the highlights. So in this case, I'll just do my typical, uh, you know, editing that I would do. And when I have an image that is underexposed, and I've done videos on this before, this is, could be another stupid Lightroom trick, is I bring highlights all the way down and shadows all the way up. First thing I do, you can see, you look at it, it's kind of flat now, but it's still underexposed. Then what I'll do is I'll go to exposure and I'll just eyeball it and eke that up until it looks like it's perfectly exposed. That's my little stupid Lightroom trick when I have an image that is underexposed. It also works if you have an image that is overexposed as well. Just immediately go to highlights and shadows. Highlights all the way down, shadows all the way out, up. Then if your image is underexposed, move the exposure slider up. If your image is overexposed, move the exposure slider down. 
Then I'll get a white point as I normally would. I'll do that. Then I'll get a black point like that. And we can even eke this up a little bit more. So I don't do much with texture um, clarity dehaze globally. You notice I very, very rarely will move vibrance and saturation globally as well. I prefer to use specific masks uh, for anything like that. Um, next in my workflow is I typically would do the sky. So I'll go up to uh, masking mask for the sky. Then I'll go to effects and I work these sliders from the bottom up as always. Then I'll close down that and I will go to color mixer. I again use the mixer and I'll go to yellow luminance and I'll make the yellow brighter and the green darker like that. And actually, I don't think I need to add any saturation at all. Uh, the green's really green. I don't need to add any saturation at all. Um, maybe I want to maybe tweak out a little more color in the yellow. I would, but I don't think I need to. Uh, maybe a tiny bit. Um, so let's call this a day and we'll go to effects and we'll put my little dark vignette on there. And there is a uh, before and there's after, but if you want to see the, the actual before I did this tonal contrast to the grass, there's before and there's after there's before and there's after. Now I could do the same thing for the trees if I wanted to, but for the sake of this video and not making it an hour long. I think you get the idea of how I go about doing this. So hopefully what I showed you in this video will help you uh, maybe add a little more pop to any of your images that have expansive green grass. Just add some contrast. And the way I like to do it is as I demonstrating using the mixer. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.